Hey folks, as you can tell, coming to you by this method is not my preferred way of communicating. But I really wanted and I really felt such a need to share my heart with you. And this is the best way I know how for now. This coming Sunday will mark the sixth straight weekend that our church services will be coming to your homes via the video stream. And I don't know for sure how many more Sundays we'll need to live stream into your homes, but know this, our staff has really learned some things, some things about how to live with changes, and we've also learned some things about you. And that's what I'm wanting to share with you these next few minutes. Now, I'll be honest with you, way back on March the 22nd, I stood on that platform where I've stood many times and I preached to an empty building. It was uncomfortable at first, it was different. It was a change and I wasn't uh, really expecting, but oh my. Then I felt his anointing. God's presence covered me. And I felt that the building was full and you know, it was. It was full of your prayers. Your prayers had invited his anointing to fill this place and he did. And when I finished, and Mike threw me a towel and he said, Pastor, you're sweating. And you know what? It felt so good. I just pray that you and your families could feel his same anointed presence through the media as it poured into your respective homes. Yes, things have changed in these past weeks, but God hasn't. He's still the same. And you know, we've learned things about you folks here at the Crossroad as well. You too have adapted to change. For many of you, it was through your workplaces. Being a former educator, my heart goes out to the teachers and the coaches, and yes, even to our students. Oh, I know they might have enjoyed the time off for a time, but now it's becoming challenging. Changes at work, changes in our study, and even changes as we endeavor to worship. We're all experiencing changes in ways we never thought possible. But let me tell you something I'm thankful for. It's the faithfulness of you wonderful people You've heard us teach many times about how the blessed church is the church who folks give faithfully of their time, their talents, and their finances. But let me share in these last couple of minutes what I've witnessed in these weeks that we've all been a part of. First of all, I've watched you give your time. The time that you folks have spent tuning in to our services, our youth programs and the devotions are so rewarding to, through the efforts of our media staff. It's so encouraged when we read your posts, witness your likes, or just a thumbs up. I don't know how they keep up with just who's on and who's not. I realize that you guys are sharing your precious time with us as we attempt to bring the word of the Lord into your homes. And I see you sharing these messages. I've seen the thousands of viewers have visited our efforts, some joining us on a weekly basis. And I hear how people are checking in on each other, whether by a phone call, by our text, or maybe even a short post. It's all time well spent. But I also see how some of you folks are giving your, not only your time, but your talents as well. The labors of love I've witnessed ceases to amaze me. From construction projects of sewing face masks to preparing meals for those who are recovering, to those who are using their talents like with well, these media productions, People, your church family is giving of their talents. Our local officials have asked us not to refrain from preparing boxes of non-perishable nourishments for our communities. And folks have continued day after day offering their services, sharing comforting words to the bereaved and hurting. God has blessed our people with a variety of talents and I see you using them for the Lord. And when we finally get back together here in a few weeks, you will see what a lot of talented folks have contributed creating new video venues in our sanctuary. These efforts will enable us to reach our new church, the folks that are faithfully tuning in to our services via live streaming. And know these are some folks we might uh, have never met before that are tuning in each week. Some are responding with comments, and some like yesterday, a family who's never set foot on our campus from another state came to allow their son to take his next step in obedience and being baptized. But then there's what I've seen with your continued giving, giving of your finances. So many of you continue to give your sacrificial offerings and returning your tithe back to the Lord. Listen, I almost got caught in the trap. I caught myself listening to the professional 
ministerial leaders telling us how to expect the finances to fall off, the churches to drop, and some preparing us for as much as a 50% uh, uh, loss in our in income. Now, I understand many churches have seen this prophecy come to pass, but not so here with you folks. In my heart, I pray, Lord, not for my sake or for our church budget, but let these people give and experience the benefit of your promises you have already made. Give and it shall be given to you, pressed down, full and running over. Now here's our promise to you folks. In the weeks we still have left to be distanced from you, we're going to make sure that when you come back for that very first time, it's going to be special. We're going to be ready for you. The church building is going to be sanitized to the nth degree and ready for you. The services, the worship, it's going to be exciting and anointed. We'll do whatever needs to be done to make your welcome home a special experience, the best it can be. So one last time, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your giving, for your praying, for your caring. God bless each and every one of you.